Now, they may have been uh, pipped at the post in last year's independence referendum, but they haven't fallen silent. Thousands of Yes campaigners are set to turn out today for a major rally in the Scottish city of Glasgow to mark a year since the historic vote. <laughs> and right now, you are living on borrowed time. If you continue to ignore Scotland's voice, if you continue to disrespect the choice that people across this country made in May, more and more people will conclude that Westminster simply cannot deliver for Scotland. Well, support for independence has been growing, with the Scottish National Party recording a landslide victory in general elections earlier this year. Supporters on social media have got behind the hashtag still yes, with many predicting a very different outcome if a referendum was held today. People are generally disenchanted with the vows Westminster made to keep the UK together, as Artie's Harry Fear has been finding out on the streets of Glasgow. Well, this is the so-called vow made at the 11th hour of the referendum campaign by the then three main leaders of the Westminster parties. It urges Scots to vote no in exchange for faster, safer and better change. But a year on, and the actual architect of this vow, former Labour leader and Scot himself, Gordon Brown, says Westminster has fallen short of fulfilling this promise. How do you feel about what's being proposed for devolution now, a year on after the referendum? I feel the main parties didn't deliver what they promised we'd deliver for a, for a no vote. Not enough. Not even remotely. We were promised powers that we've never been given for the referendum, and we need more, basically. Disappointed, more than angry. Well, a new poll finds less than 10% think the vow has been delivered completely. Obviously, most people in this city voted yes, and we've heard that people really now are very angry and frustrated a year on. I refuse to believe that the politicians who made that promise on the front page of the Daily Record actually had the best interests of ordinary people in Scotland at their heart. People are seeing through the lies in the media, you know, the lies of politicians, and that's a really exciting thing. And of course, one of the driving factors of calls for devolution and independence was rejection of the austerity regime pushed by the Conservatives. 30-year-old Billy has been sleeping rough for two months in the city centre. No, they said there was got to be all sorts of changes happening. Not a thing's happened, innit? Well, it's just, just stayed exactly the same, know what I mean, innit? I think it get worse, probably, know what I mean? Now, a new report looking at what's set to be further devolved says that the new powers to tweak economic policy could actually make Scotland worse off economically because of administrative costs, yet still left without the power to, for example, create a new benefit for the unemployed. People undoubtedly want the power to... To, to combat austerity, do you know what I mean? To radically transform people's lives. You know, I think that there is a growing appetite for radical social change and, you know, that's independence. When will the Prime Minister deliver on the promises that he made to the people of Scotland? Yeah. The more it's perceived Westminster politics has reneged on its promises, the greater the frustration and the more appetite there will be for full independence. And another referendum could be in sight. It will be down to the people of Scotland to decide whether they want to vote for independence or not. I think it could be, yeah. In the next 10 years? I would say less than that, probably. Five, maybe. In Glasgow, I'm Harry Fear, RT.